What is up, my fellow tall girls and short kings? That's right, it's a sequel to your favorite Netflix original hit, Tall Girl. It's Is It Kino of Tall Girl 2. And it wouldn't be a tall girl review. If not for the shortest king we know, don't call him Lord Farquaad, just call him late for dinner. It's Artsy Prodsy. You can call me anything, just don't call me late for dinner. Oh, that's your one. The one thing that's off limits is being late for dinner. What about breakfast yeah. or lunch? Uh, that That's all right. Just not late for dinner. <laughs> yep. And uh, we, we needed a, a, a gentle giant to join us as well. So we got Aggie back as well. Yeah, I like to give it that special gentle touch. Now, since this is a sequel, really like a sequel podcast to the previous Tall Girl review... Uh, I thought I would bring in some audience performance reviews from the Uh-oh. comment section, Heartsy. Would you like to hear some of these? Um, I've stopped reading the comments on all the podcasts I appear in because I couldn't mm. handle it. Are uh, you ready for sure. your daily humiliation ritual? Um, I guess so. I, I know you've seen this one because you've commented on it, but I think Gang Stalker, with a lot of letters that are spelled with numbers, says... Can you guys review some white pill movie or something so Hartsy will quit like Florian? Ooh. What do you think of oof. that? And that has well, that has like 32 thumbs up. So that's like well, a whole classroom of children. Well, they hated Jesus too, uh, is uh, where my mind immediately goes. And he lived to be 33, so if I give this one more like, it will be the holy comment. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think the problem with this comment is that a lot of its information is invalid as of right now. Like, Florian is still on four or five podcasts a month, so he has not actually reduced his appearances at all. And no. uh, what even is a white pill movie? Aggie, you know about these pills, I think. <laughs> what what well, the fuck's a white pill movie? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this it should have been a white pill movie from the very beginning. The whole thing is about how... You know, a short king who... Maybe, but what does white pill mean? That's like life fuel, if you will. Does that kind yeah. of get the point across? Like chicken uh, soup for the soul. So it would basically be like a very happily ever after movie where everything goes good and there's no like no suffering or misery. Uh, that is basically what we just watched. Yeah, the white pill is basically like blind optimism, whereas like the black pill is like just peak negativity. The white pill is the exact opposite. So like the KKK with their big white outfits, that's the white pill. Very yeah. optimistic about the future if things go the right way. Exactly. If Donald Trump wins, they're gonna, we're going to deport them all, not just the Mexicans this time. Oh, uh, all well, of them. Oh, You're next, uh, Artsy. I think I did, we did oh, just get shit. a uh, Discord or what is it? Disclosed TV while we were watching the movie. I think said that Trump was reportedly going to fire his campaign managers. Oh so. no! Is he doing that bad in the polls that he's? Wow. Uh, it sounds uh, like Thomas chaos over Sweet. there. <laughs> do you think he's going to fire J.D. Vance and go with somebody else? Because that seems... I mean, a lot of people seem to think that was kind of the downfall of his campaign. I, I think he'll be the first president ever to have his himself as the vice president. He'll be Trump Trump. Is he not allowed to choose, like, his son? Why not? Aaron? Any oh. of them. How old do you have to be to be VP? <laughs> At, VP doesn't even have to be a natural born citizen, I don't believe. But then if the president dies, they just get skipped over because they can't legally be president. I wonder if there's an age limit. Like, like, can Barron at 18 be VP? And then if he dies, it just goes to whoever the, the house guy is. That would be really funny. I would like an 18 year old in the office. Yeah. Like we need a Zoomer president. Anyway, exactly. we have. speaking of a Zoomer, we have another comment. Uh, this is from Heartsy Protsy. It says... Top comment is saying I should quit. It might be so over. What do you think of that one? Huh. I think um, he he he's coming from a good place, uh, from from a good heart. Uh, but I think uh, I think he might be wrong about it. I think he might be wrong. I don't think I should quit. Uh, and the uh, reply to that comment tells me exactly why. Yeah, I have the reply in here too. It says it's from Laser Bread. He says once you start getting bullied in the comments, that's how you know you have the audience's heart. Florian is probably the fan favorite, and look how much shit he catches. Exactly. Now, Eggie, exactly. is that a cope? Because you get nothing but praise and love in the comments, and you don't get bullied or hate really very much at all. <clears throat> Not in my videos. Well, uh, I think 
I mean, you just have to have the right opinions, which I always do. So, you know, if you have the wrong opinions, um, it is going to catch people's attention. They're going to say, what did that guy just say? <laughs> but, uh, you know what? At the end of the day, just be yourself, even if it's extremely abrasive and antagonizing and always wrong. You got to just be yourself. And if people want to stare at it, that's their prerogative. I don't think I'm either of those. I mean, any of those things, but... Uh, well, yeah. it might be another horseshoe theory w- where Aggie is somebody that you love to love and Florian is somebody that you love to hate. So, like, technically, you're feeling love for both. It's just that you there's, like, a negative love for Florian. Like, you love how much pain he gives you. I love his games so much. You know, big ball frog guy. Uh, Mingo Doe says Heartsy's Florian accent just sounds like Heartsy making a Heartsy impression. That one, um, uh, that one made me chuckle when I read it. That one kept you up at night. No. Um, uh, do you want to try your myself. Florian impression again? I do not know. I, uh... oh, he's doing it. That sounds, <laughs> that's pretty good. It does sound like Heartsy doing a Heartsy impression. That comment was right. Uh, and finally, Louis Acosta. I think. Eggy, that's your number one favorite fan? I think so, yeah. Also known as Cool Chucho on Rumble. Shout out, Sam. He says, I said I hated Heartsy before, before, but now I just feel bad for him. Yeah. So I see this as an absolute win to quote the the smart Hulk. I mean, he no longer feels hatred for you, just pity. That's pretty good. Right, right. That's, uh, I strive for nothing else. (laughs) But people's pity? Exactly. (laughs) Yep. Well, speaking of some uh, pitiful people, should we talk about the plot of Tall Girl 2? The sequel D. Rated R. Rated R, boy. I didn't see any of that. Well, thankfully, the film opens up with the the lovely couple from the end of the first movie, the tall girl and the short king, uh, recapping the plot of the first movie to a poor cashier who does not care and does not want to hear about this. And he, he surely cannot see the montage of the scenes from the first movie playing out as they're narrating over them. So he's got to be pretty confused about all this. But uh, who, which, which of you wants to, to recap their recap? Um, uh, I, they basically uh, recap uh, just everything that happens in the first movie between them. And uh, there's a cute But for the poor audience movie. at home who does not remember what we said in the first podcast, give us like your 30 second recap eggy go all right girl is lay tall and that is lay bad she suffers and is treated terribly um but then her childhood friend who is very short and had been constantly fawning over her and by very uh, short we mean slightly taller than hartsey um (laughs) right (laughs) okay all right well actually i already kind of messed this up so anyways uh, girl is lay tall, that's lay bad. Lay hot exchange student arrives and hits it off. And oh, now she's queen of the school. But uh, when push comes to shove, lay exchange student says that she's dumb and everyone laughs. Now her childhood friend who has been in love with her, who is short, uh, stands up and gets punched in the face by this tall and much stronger and better looking man. Um, but you know, and she respects that he stood up for her. So they end up linking up and she goes on a rant in during homecoming, which is referenced in the second film about how everybody is lay bad and she is lay good. And I mean, she really is just, it's a self-serving message through and through Then everybody applauds and they live happily ever after. But does the tall girl get lay laid? You know, I think her legs probably got to go up quite a ways, but <laughs> either way, whatever works. Okay, so the problem I have with Tall Girl 2 is that where the first movie was very much about the prejudice faced by the tall girl and all the, the bad parts of life being tall. This movie, she she overcame feeling self-confident or whatever the fuck in the first movie. Mm-hmm. So we don't really have much of that. The second movie is very much just high school level relationship drama where it's insufferable and very accurate because yeah these are written how a 15 year old in a relationship really would be where they're breaking up over the most retarded unnecessary arguments and they're just more focused on being right and winning rather than properly communicating and that's that's the entire movie it's just like different couples uh, forming and breaking up and getting back together and by the end, it, it's kind of like a Shakespeare comedy where we have just like three new happy couples. And, and it was, n- there's no plot. 
It, it's really <laughs> just relationship drama nonstop, and there's no social commentary about being a tall girl, I don't think. No, the movie starts with everybody already loving her. She's walking through school, everyone's greeting her, like uh, like uh, being so cool to her, loving her. It starts out with everyone uh, just in the, in the best of moods. There's no uh, there's no conflict. There's no uh, there's no more of that commentary from the first movie. Yeah, and you would think she's up. She's got the the boy of her dreams, and she finally realized her best friend is her true love, romance, soulmate. And she's mm -hmm. popular at school, and she was just cast as the lead in the musical. So she should be up. And the poor writers, whoever was forced to write Tall Girl 2, now has to somehow find a conflict in that. So now the boyfriend, Dunkelman, the little short king, he's like, oh, now now you're too popular at school. You just don't got time for the Dunkelman. Everybody, they're giving you high fives in the hallway. Why would you still be with little old me? Like, this is just coming out of nowhere. There's nothing that would lead up to this strange outburst. Like, she just... Not even a hint, not even a hint at him feeling a little uh, down about that at all. Just uh, spurts out of nowhere and is the main driving conflict of the entire movie. Yes, and they're having a romantic dinner, but then she I think she wants to go to rehearsal for the play or something like that. And he says, oh yeah, I totally understand. I'm, I'm like a loving, compassionate boyfriend. Like, we can just do mm -hmm. this dinner later. And she's like, okay, thank you for giving me permission. Like, I, I guess I'll go. And that's when he loses his shit. Like, he was bluffing in being a nice guy, hoping that she would not actually leave. So like, he's yeah. just a complete phony, <laughs> and I have no empathy or sympathy or anything for this character at this point. He's a complete fucking fraud, pretending to be a nice guy, and then he has incel rage when she goes along with what he told her to do. So fuck Dunkelman, and I'm pissed that he gets her in the end. Like he, The plot should have been she finds a better guy who's not a little sociopath. Eggy, do you concur? <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, he actually, in the movie, uh, forms his own uh, MGTOW movement to post online uh, just because uh, he thinks that he just wants to essentially display an image more than he wants to be an actual person. He wants to just seethe behind the camera and, you know, uh, hopefully watch her suffer for not just going, well, even though she went with what he said, but just not playing his mind games with him. Um He's, uh, I think he might just be a virgin with rage. Shout out to my homeboy, <laughs> Christian. And, so he, like, he had his dream girl, and he's just throwing her away for no reason. Yeah, so, um, the Blade Swedish character is back. I forgot his name. I'm just gonna call him Blade. No, he's not uh, even back. This was, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to say real quick, we were shocked. And maybe, maybe I form a headcanon in my brain, and then when the... When the product I watch does not match it, I feel like reality has been broken. But I, I just went into this assuming it was the next school year and that the exchange student, Stieg, from the last movie, The Romantic Interest for Tall Girl, I assumed he would be back home by now. But no, even after all the events of the first movie, he's still living with the Short King as an exchange student. He's, they just like, he's a main guns. character. They say a few times that only three months have passed between the first and second movie, and uh, and the Blade guy is still there, he's still living there, and him and Dunkelman are slowly becoming friends, and then, uh-oh, his foreign exchange sister also shows up, and uh, both the sister and Dunkelman happen to break up with their girlfriend, I mean, with, with their partners at that exact same time. So, they form a movement together to post online to make the other feel bad about the breakup. Yeah, to make their former partners jealous. And this girl is also very tall, since, uh, you know, she's also from Sweden or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck. Uh, not quite as tall as Tall Girl, but a, a, a subplot for tall, uh, tall Girl is that she has um, uh, imposter syndrome, anxiety voice in her head, which is just her saying mean things to herself in her brain. And she's like, oh, it's a rival Tall Girl. Oh, she's going to steal the dunkster from me. Uh, an even hotter, prettier Tall Girl. Oh, no. What did you think of Tall Girl's anxiety in her monologue, Hartsy? Is that what your brain's just like 24-7? Uh, exactly, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> un unlike this, my problems are actually valid, but, um, uh, no. I, I actually... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I like the uh, realistic depictions of panic attacks that happen throughout the movie. Really, uh, really interesting. Honestly, um, more realistic than the Puss in Boots movie. You know, as good as any Pixar bullshit that they've been putting out lately, like Turning Red, Panic Attack. Uh, Eggie, in the Velma and Daphne movie, wasn't there a similar theme when they go into the, the dark elevator and it's just their eyeballs and it's like their their inner voice talking shit to them? Is that just a theme of like movies for teenage girls? Well, I would hope that it isn't, but uh, from my understanding, which is very minimal and probably almost entirely compromised of these films, you know, it's like if they're not the, the social creme de la creme, you know, the top of the social peak in their uh, school, then it follows them as some kind of curse for life, apparently. They don't get Giga Chad, they only get regular Chad. You know, they don't get a millionaire, they only get a thousandaire. They just, they aren't punching their, with their full strength. Uh, but my first thought when I heard that she was talking to herself and had voices in her head was that there was gonna be a schizophrenia <laughs> art. Yes. I think that would have been pretty cool. You know, like, okay, we know she's tall. She overcame that. She needs something new to chew on. I think schizophrenia would really be interesting. And then when we're talking about Dunkster, he's having these psychotic episodes. Maybe they were just getting hit with, like, some kind of solar flare or something. Mm. And it's making him go crazy. But, yes, I think hashtag uh, confidence for women. So then these movies will never have to exist anymore. So excited for the third one, though. It's coming out sometime soon. Still no release date on the third in the trilogy. Maybe we did the second one too quick. Because now we're going to have to wait so long for the third one that I'll forget all the amazing plot details of uh, Swedish guy hooks up with tall girl's black friend. Because why not? They're the only other two fucking characters in the movie not in a relationship. I guess they would just get together. And that could be that, another that fucking five-minute bullshit subplot is, Oh, hell no! I can't break the girl code! I can't I can't make out with the boy that my my friend was crushing on! And he's like, Oh, well, I, I did not know there was such a girl code. Oh, and this is five minutes of the movie. Like, mm, I don't recall her sounding like that, but uh, <laughs> maybe I'll have to rewatch. Well, okay, let's hear your impression of her. Uh, I don't think I should do that. Actually. Every that... every impression he does just sounds like him. Like this is pathetic. Try again, dude. That just sounded like you. My bad. I really gotta work on that. Okay, that sounded more like a black woman. You're getting better. Thank you, Aggie. Would you like to do your impression yeah. of? I think your name was Shaniqua. Yeah, Farisha. I think. <laughs> it might. I don't uh, know if you're being racist or honest. That's mostly the right word, I think. Uh, uh, I'm pulling uh, on my collar. I'm, I'm gulping. <laughs> what, what do you care? I've been here in Giga Stacy's shop all day, and I've been making these designs. Oh, child, I've been making them, that good stuff. Uh, and then here comes the, the white lady. She goes, oh, my, that is magnificent. Outfit, that is <laughs> Who's the designer? Who's the... Oh, she's right over there. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I did that. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, you've got to make a lot more of these. I'd love to have them in my store. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been blade blight buys the entire stock of her clothes. Oh yeah, yeah she's got so cool. many and she got the triple F the form fit and function. Oh she's got she's so good and we are so noble. I watched the show with the gay men and we know so much about fashion. Alright, well I'll see you at my store. Oh my god, we got, we got the deal! <laughs> that's uh, complete, like, you'd probably sync that up to the video of, of the scene, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you played yeah. out the full thing. Go oh. ahead, Hartsey. Uh, I, I was just gonna say, um, so, uh, yeah, there's a subplot of, uh, of the Blade guy and uh, the black friend. Now, uh, why, you keep saying the Blade guy, is that a YouTuber that looks like this character? Uh, he's a Swedish rapper who uh, who's the only Swedish person I know of. Okay. Um, what about, so, uh, isn't the, the guy in season three and four of Succession Swedish? I don't, I, I don't know. It's been so long since I watched that oh, show. I gotta no. rewatch it. We'll do it on the podcast. Oh yeah, for sure. Three episodes per week, it'll take four months. It's easy. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I'm so down for that. Yeah, hell yeah. We did it for Breaking Bad, fuck it. We did, we did. Yeah. Succession Rewatch Podcast. Yeah, let's do it. Oh yeah. 
Um, but no, uh, the, the um, Stig and the black girl are uh, boyfriend girlfriend now, and there's a subplot, like a very very small one, where she's uh, very concerned about the fact that he kissed tall girl's ex boyfriend, and uh, she's very worried about it. And then when she finds out, uh, it, it's all for nothing because she doesn't care. The yeah, tall girl just says. Yeah, I magically already know. I didn't see this happen, but I, I psychically discovered just from the way you guys were acting that you guys must have just been making out moments before I arrived well, in the parking lot. I assume the writers told her. Yeah, the, she read the script <laughs> and yeah. she's like, yeah, I don't care. So we wasted five minutes of the movie on this for no reason. Just trying to push it to the minimum time I guess we need or whatever the fuck they're, whatever Netflix told them the movie had to be. Because it's it, this is not a piece of art that anybody made to express their inner self or their life story. This is Netflix is hiring us to do a cookie cutter sequel that feels like just disgusting DLC for the first movie, just like extended content that sucks. Uh, I, I likened the movie to deleted scenes from the first movie because it feels like a lot of the things that were resolved are just continuing on unresolved in the sequel. The bully is still being a bitch, and I guess her arc is that I don't know, she gets compassion for the tall girl at some point. Yeah, she, she changes completely as a character and is no longer a uh, bitchy bully at the end. If, uh, not, like, not really for any reason other than tall girl was burning her high heels and the girl, like the bully, saved them because she respects fashion. And that might actually be the real motivation because like, there's nothing else in the movie that would make her change her behavior towards the tall girl. At least well, nothing yeah, but, that I uh, observed. She also has a good friend who's like, I can't be your friend anymore because you're like evil and bad and I don't like that. Maybe if you change, I'll be your friend again. And then there's like, oh no. Yeah, and this friend is dolls. is a black boy who just so happens to be the boy that tall girl was making out with in the first movie to try to make Stieg jealous at a party. Well, this guy has genuine emotions for the tall girl. So he's sort of the love triangle between tall girl and Dunkelman through their breakup. Uh, and it's just all boring and shitty and horrible. <laughs> this has truly been the worst movie I've seen in a long time. I liked the first one. Like, not liked it, but I was okay with it. I expected to go into the first one wanting to kill myself more at the end, but it was like a, like a net negative uh, result. I came out of this one with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> with a way more higher... Uh, ability uh, want to kill myself. <laughs> Sorry, it, yeah. the suicidal meter is off the charts right now. Yeah, the suicidal meter. Yeah, it truly is just horrible teenage relationship drama, mm -hmm. spiraling in circles with different characters that you don't care about that all suck. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is a one star out of five on Letterbox for me. Uh, what do you guys think you're gonna put down? Hmm. If I do a uh, letterbox, I'm probably going to give it a one half star. Just half of it, like the lowest possible? Yes. That's what I gave Fred star. the movie, and that caused me more harm and pain than this one did. So I think just... I mean, the Fred movie is peak. Peak suicide bait? <laughs> <laughs> uh, peak Kino, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Aggie, what are you going to rank this one? Uh, I think one is fair. I might possibly consider 1.5, but anything that I'm giving addition to this film for is, um, so a big part of this plot is that the tall girl is the main character in this play, Bye Bye Betty or something, no, Bye Bye Birdie rather. Um, and there's a lot of anxiety around this, but when they actually do the uh, play for that two or three minutes and they're doing some performances, uh, the performances were very well done. The choreography and the music was very good for that part. I mean, I'm talking in the quality of it being a standard teenage romance dramedy. Um, so something that I would say, the technologically speaking, like a high school musical, obviously nowhere near as uh, catchy or good but there was definitely a level of quality met with all that that i can appreciate um so well, that's you have an ear for this kind of stuff was there any auto tune in the singing like is tall girl uh, actually good at singing it was treated i know we did we did watch it a little bit faster so that True, kind of yeah. um it will that'll sort of that compression will peak uh the, my ear anyway to any kind of unnatural tuning it did seem to have been treated somewhat um, but I don't think that she is a bad singer, and the choreography was still nice as well. 
uh, especially for with her height and everything, she was, was doing that well. So I found that to be decent. Heartsy, are you good at singing? Uh, no, not at all. But that doesn't well, stop me. Sing us uh, the theme song of your favorite show. Um, I, I would rather not do that, but I do have one note from this movie. Uh, one I, I musical least, note that you would like to sing? Yeah, one musical, musical note, but that will be uh, in the post show that the viewers won't uh, be able to hear. For the patrons um, only, members only of the Measly Few on the Treehouse channel, if you want to hear Heartsy singing the theme so song true. to the boys. <gasps> the boys, the boys, yo, it's time for the boys, it's the boys. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of the boys theme song. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. It's yeah. boys, 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 um, uh, we should do that, yeah. That What's new, Scooby podcast. Boys? Coming after boys. <laughs> Gonna fight the seven boys. Say Homelander boys. This is, a, I don't even know what Scooby Doo cartoon this one is. I just know oh, the that's, song. That's, uh, that's, uh, What's new, Scooby Doo? Yeah. Scooby Doo. Yeah. Then it goes. Yeah, you Boy know Scooby-Doo. we're gonna solve that mystery. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Gonna kill the seven. I love yeah. that show. That was my favorite Scooby Doo show growing up. Hell yeah. Yeah. What point uh, were we making about Tall Girl 2? Um, I have one note that I've written down because I was really slack on notes this time, mainly because I got violently ill and started just throwing up everywhere while the movie was playing. So Did I this really have... happen? Um, yes. Yes. Do you uh, have an image of the aftermath and just like <laughs> buckets full of vomit? Uh, no, I, I cleaned it all up, unfortunately. Well, uh, next time, think about the what the podcast thumbnail needs, okay? <laughs> Oof, I don't know if that'd be very, uh, very good for YouTube, but... Yeah, okay. I just posted yeah. a thumbnail of Barack Obama holding a gun to Aggie's head. You think I care? It, of course it's <laughs> monetized, so we do it for the art. Of course, of course. Um, but no, after being violently ill, I managed to uh, write down one note, and there was, um, at the ice cream bar, Jake from State Farm is standing behind our titular couple, and that's all I wrote down. He did look familiar. I thought he kind of looked like, um, what's his name, uh, the guy from that Atlanta show, he did the music too. I forget, he did the This Is America. Oh yeah, Childish Gambino, whatever his name is. You kind of look like him, but not, now you mention it, uh, yeah, it's State, uh, Jake from State Farm, that is right. I immediately uh, rushed to Google to see if it was uh, Jake from State Farm, and it was, in fact, him. Hashtag not my Jake from State Farm, hashtag Jake was white, hashtag blackwashing. I don't know. I think I think the new Jake is uh, is funnier. Wow, I don't know. Yeah. wow, the, the liberal Sorry. brain parasite has taken over. Yeah, um, speaking of parasites, the reason why I was actually sick is because uh, I had parasites in my stomach from uh, that I was trying to get out. So I uh, sprayed like bug spray down my throat because I heard <laughs> I had a stomach bug and that made me really sick. And that's why I started throwing up everywhere. Did he say he had a stomach bug so he drank bug spray? Is that what he's yeah. telling us? Yeah. Okay, is it, are you practicing your stand-up material on the show now? No, no, that's just what happened. <laughs> this is you're gonna do this as a type five up on stage. No, but I did. Let's actually, hear the rest. Let's hear the next four no, minutes and thirty. No, this is not a joke. I did actually get sick while watching <laughs> from this eating movie. bug spray. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know what happened. My stomach just started dropping, and I mm. and I felt very sick. Well, I it's, thought that this would make you full of glee and wonder because we do have a rare situation and it only lasts about five minutes in the movie where the tall Chad is the subservient cuckold to the short king because now that uh, short king and tall girl are dating and happy for like, you know, the first 10 minutes of the movie, uh, they're having this romantic dinner and tall Swedish Chad who used to be in love with Tall Girl and is desperate to have any friends at all, like he truly is a, a forever alone character in this movie, who is constantly accidentally saying things that pisses everybody off, which uh, I guess they did say that he had no friends back home, and in this movie they really doubled down and, and show us how and why. But he's like, he's helping cook the dinner, like the romantic uh, food for the dinner, 
and he's like the waiter for the two of them. So he's just a complete cuck. I thought you would love that, seeing him have to wine and dine uh, and serve. The short king who stole his fucking girl. Uh, I was clapping at that moment, uh, cheering, actually. Um, in fact, uh, the neighbors called me, uh, asking me to stop screaming so loudly. Uh, they yeah. have your number on speed dial because you're always watching short kings succeed in media. Uh, I'm always, I, I have a bunch of noise complaints against me. They just have me on, on, on their... Is bridge. Hunchback of Notre know. Dame kind of like your Bible? No. Um, uh, it's, I've never seen it, actually. Me neither. <laughs> well, that is one ugly motherfucker, and I would definitely judge him. I mean... I don't know if the movie has anything to say about that, but I'm not going to watch it to find out. I think a Tall Girl 3 probably uh, might uh, touch on, like, disgusting, disgustingly deformed people. I think that's what <laughs> Tall Girl 3 is going to be about. <laughs> the uh, actual title is going to be Ugly Girl, Tall Girl 3 is just the working title. Well, yeah. if Tall Girl wants to put her money where her mouth is and, and prove, oh, if, if somebody can accept me for my physical deformity and love me for who I am, let's see if she can extend that same hand and maybe she gets in a relation, relationship with, like, an elephant man or somebody with, like, you know, lots of tumors and horrible deformation of their face and body. And she has to love him for him. And if she can't... Maybe she should be forced to be forever alone, and that's how like the trilogy ends. Is that like she has an incomplete character arc? She does not fulfill the quality that she expects other people to find in her, and therefore she dies alone. And, and, and she tries to right commit suicide. I think we said this before last time. She tries to commit suicide by hanging, but she's too tall. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't work. See, I had the same problem, but the opposite. I can't reach the rope. Uh, big fan. <laughs> There's not a stool tall enough to help you, your neck reach the rafter. No, no. I, I've looked everywhere. That's Even a step ladder doesn't work. That's crazy because you'd think there'd be ladders of any size, but Charcy's <laughs> just so short he can't reach the ceiling. There's no ladder on earth tall enough to. <laughs> and this looked. doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, what are you going to do? It is what it is, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Any other points from this great film that we all enjoyed? Uh, so the new like love interest, brief love interest character that goes nowhere because they get back together at the end, Tall Girl and Dunkle. I just realized I don't know Tall Girl's name like at all. I just know her as the Tall Girl, which uh, wow, maybe what's I... her name like Sophie or something? Sophie, Lacey, Stella. Yeah, the Swedish Tall Girl, Stella. No, the the main character. Uh. <laughs> I mean, Tall Girl, Short King, Black Friend, these yeah. are the names that the audience will recognize, <laughs> not if we say the real shit. Exactly. So the new, like, Chad love interest, uh, he, he has a little, uh, a little moment where he's like, I used to be fat. Uh, my oh. insecurity is I used to be a fat kid, right? That's his big, uh, his big hangup. He's like this, uh, he's like this attractive, uh, Chad male whose problem is he was fat when he was fucking a kid. So, uh, great. And is this stolen valor, Aggie? Because when they test, when they cast tall girl, they get a genuine tall girl. So she probably can relate to these issues faced by the character. She probably grew up and was called draft and all these things. She probably gave a lot of input to the script for all the horrible, heinous things that people say to her. But these cast like fucking Chad black guy with the ultimate, he has like, like a Peter Griffin and a Quagmire shot at the same time. Like it's it's very Chad like, but it's also insane. a bunch in. Yes. Uh, I I doubt that this actor was ever fat at any point in his life. He's probably always an athletic Chad Eggy. Does that piss you off? Is is this hypocritical of the movie to cast this guy? Well, yes, it is uh, because uh, from my dietary education background, I did almost do one year in college for it. Um, if he was becoming so obese at a young age, it's very likely he would have been having to consume a lot of high-calorie processed foods that were high in sugar and um, trans fats, uh, polyunsaturated fats, I believe is the bad one. Anyway, um, and all that processed food that would have been high-calorie and difficult for the body to digest would have not had him using his uh, mandible. Uh, he wouldn't have been doing a lot of chewing like he would be doing chewing with fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, like whole foods. Um, so just such a weak use of those muscles would have uh, not allowed his face to develop in the way that it did. 
So well, maybe actually... he spent two full years eating celery because that's kind of crunchy. Maybe that <laughs> built the jawline and made him lose the weight. Hey, well, you know what? That anything's possible. If they had, and you don't even have to say this out loud, just, you know, subtle detail. He's always eating let or celery as a snack. Boom. Like, that's character building. That's world building. That's all they needed. They didn't do it. Again, get the three of us in the writer's room for Tall Girl 3. It's not too late. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think um, my personal character has done a, a 360 since the last movie. So I, I got the last movie feeling uplifted. It was an uplifting ending. I was like, you know what? Maybe other people's problems are valid, but uh, I feel the complete opposite now. I think, oh, I used to be fat, but now I'm a tall, handsome Chad. Oh, boo-hoo. You know, uh, get a grip. Whatever. And also, being fat is a choice. Being tall, you're stuck doing that. Like, you can make changes to your life to not be fat anymore. Right. I, I just don't think it's a, a good comparison. Like, they should have made it, like, at least, like, maybe racism. Like, yeah, I'm stuck being black. You're stuck being tall. It sucks. But no, like, we're doing I used to be fat. Okay, what? So am I supposed to say I used to be tall? Like, what the fuck am I supposed to get out of this? You've I'm not going to say any other words. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I think they could have made him bald. I feel like his hair was very, like... <laughs> Balding in high school, that'd be good. Professionally styled. Yeah, he should have... Uh, if you can't get him fat, get him bald. You know what? And he, he wasn't even short because they already covered that, so... Yeah, he's like three inches shorter than tall girls, so he's like six foot. next step, you know, and he didn't appear to be poor. He, maybe he could have been wearing some dirty rags or something, but <laughs> he's still Chad, though. No, they can't let the black character look dirty Fucking or poor. something more sympathetic than I used to be fat, but now I'm tall, handsome Chad. Something. Yeah, I used to have a problem. Wow, oh, compelling. Wow. Yeah, clapping. Once upon a time, Jumping. I had a problem. Wow. And considering that you're, this guy's like only 16, it actually proportionally could have not lasted long enough to really be considered a serious problem. So it is what it is. He probably was fat for like six months and then got right <laughs> back to being Chad again. Let's do our predictions and hopes for Tall Girl 3, even though we'll forget about them by the time it comes out. Right. If if they only had a three-month time skip between the two movies, I'm guessing they're not going to end up being in college by the third one. If like At, at the most, it'll be senior year of high school, because I think they might be juniors or, or maybe even sophomores right now. So if we're doing Tall Girl's fine, final year at high school, are we going to see a repeat of... Uh, trouble in paradise with the Dunkelman. Are they going to do a three-peat fucking same plot again? They're going to break up and fall back in love. I think we're going to do the same plot over again, like exactly the same and just hope everyone forgets. Yeah, every three years they can just repeat the Tall Girl movie and it's so forgettable that nobody will even <laughs> notice. Yeah, and when the actors get too old, they're going to have Tall Girl rebooted and then, uh, and then you know, it's going to repeat the cycle. Eggy, do you have any predictions? Well, I think if uh, the casting is available to view online, I'm not sure if it is or if it's just still coming together, I think it's going to immediately give all the answers. Like, if everybody looks exactly the same, boom, exactly the same. If there's, like, a kind of Chadley-looking guy who has some new name that we didn't recognize from before, okay, then it's probably going to be very linear and uh, predictable plot that involves him. Uh, but yeah, it could be like the body positive female film version of Baby Daddy Diary or whatever that Tubi show is. <laughs> like they Baby just, Daddy Duty. Uh, Baby Daddy Duty. Just like, oh, it, it, this has like sound and a picture and there's people in it. Okay, all right, yeah, here you go. Here's your check. <laughs> Does Netflix need higher standards for Tall Girl 3? Because Tall Girl 2, I was shocked, has a lower rating than Tall Girl 1 and that was low to begin with. Should we do ratings predictions, like predict the Rotten Tomatoes score for Tall Girl 3, and whoever is closest to their number mm, gets some sort of fabulous prize? What do you think, Hardsy? Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, throw something out. I'm going to say a 3.6. Uh, I mean, uh, you could just do like a whole number. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you wanna that's not how four? IMDb ranks, num- uh, ranks films. It's not all IMDb, I'm, Rotten Tomatoes score is what I was saying. Oh, but. Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, okay. Uh, two stars. <laughs> it's just a percentage you need. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, like it's what, what percentage of the critics 25%. will give it a positive score is the question. 25%. Okay, that's... 
I think that might be shockingly high. I, I was going to go with 8%. What about you, Aiden? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, what is the uh, percentage? For I don't the know. I don't remember. Okay. I was going by the rating of what the users of the illegal streaming website gave the movies, and this uh, had a much lower score than number one. Okay, I'm going to say I feel like uh, 25%. That's what Hartsy said! You know, he said 45, didn't he? No! Oh. D- did you say 25, Hartsy? I said 25. Oh okay. my god. You Sorry. know what's funnier than 24? 25. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm going to go 24 and fuck over Hartsy unless, I mean, it might might be way higher. Maybe he'll win. I don't know. I was I was going off the IMDB ratings for the first tall girl. It was like five point three or something like that. And then um and then the second one was four point seven. So I was just uh. Uh, going by a gradual decrease in numbers. Okay. Well, you know, I think uh, in that case, I think thirty five percent because I think if we're okay. moving like that, I think that this one it might still have enough steam in the engine to just only trail a little behind. But I think it's going to be decreasing regardless. So somebody who wants to earn a heart and a pin in the comments, write that down, and then when Tall Girl 3 comes out, somebody remind us to go look it up. What should the prize be for who is closest? Um, I have no idea. Um, uh, <laughs> They get to make out with the other two guys. Oh, Exactly. I'm not yeah. hearing any objections at all. Okay, well, that's the stakes. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Artsy's really down for this. I thought you were saying right. that there was going to be a prize for the person in the comments, so then I was like, I was trying to figure out what oh, no. I make out with other, like. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, the I, commenter I, can also make out with all of us. <laughs> you know, I was I was clapping my hands, but I don't think my mic picked that up, so. How about the other two guys, the losers, will you? Uh, we'll have, have to, to watch split, all movies split back the back. bill. And buy the winner a steak, a delicious, like, $10 steak from Walmart. All right. Okay, I'm down for that. That's, yes. okay. That's a fair delicious deal to me. Those are steaks I can get behind. Hmm, I wonder what's for dinner. A delicious sirloin from Walmart. Uh, do we have any final thoughts on Tall Girl 2 out of 10? Uh, I'm just hoping that one day there'll be a movie specifically for me. You know, you got the movies for the tall girls. You got you got uh, you got movies for everyone, but there's no movie lifting up people like me. Have you That's seen Shrek? Farquaad is all over that thing. Oh wow, yeah, I'm definitely a Shrek type character. No, um, you're Farquaad. Yeah, but in Farquaad loses at the end. What do you mean? Yeah, He's but it's dragon. representation. I mean, it's, no, it's I realistic to your thing. lifestyle. Like, the yeah. short guy does lose in the end. <laughs> he does. It's a, he, yeah, it's a real does. movie. Yeah. Like you want a fantasy where like the guy who looks like you wins and is happy. Like yeah. what you you just want escapism in film. Go watch I some want, fucking Pixar bullshit. Yeah, I want a film that offers like some type of optimism. Go watch that, some Miyazaki fucking garbage. Oh, what a fanciful world of fairies and demons. Gay yeah. as fuck. Okay, I, every movie needs to be something that can only happen in real life. So true. Yeah, like no, Tall Girl I'll Two. Never, they'll never make a movie like about guys like me because it would be like too depressing. We don't want audiences <laughs> killing themselves. In the yeah, even Joker, they had to give a happy ending where he yeah he's walking around with bloody footprints. Right. That's happy somehow. Right. I mean, he I seemed have, pretty like, happy about it. I mean, judging by the, uh, the second movie, uh, he seems pretty happy. Uh, the trailers in the second movie. Yeah, I'm guessing you're going to be on the Is It Kino for Joker 2 with us? Holy shit, if I'm invited, yeah, I, I have a lot of thoughts about Were you Joker not? I, I'm guessing you weren't on for the original Joker, but I, I feel I like you I don't think be. I was, like, even... I don't think we knew each other at that point. That was like. Are you retarded? Years. We've known each other for, like, ten years. Oh, yeah, my bad. What course. do you mean? It's, like, 2019. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah. Really? Mm. Huh. Joker 1 was 2019. Oh, damn. I, I, I feel like I've known you yeah. since like 2017 or 18. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Aggie, any final thoughts on Tall Girl 2? Well, here's what I think. So, a large portion of the film, as I previously mentioned, is centered around the fact that the main character is the star for a play. She's insecure. She's not measuring up to the standards of the actors around her. Skip Tall Girl 2 and watch A Streetcar Named Marge. Pure Simpsons Kino does this. I mean, 
unfathomably better. There's not a mathematical equation that could calculate the quality percentage increase that these two mediums have uh, different from each other. So, And if hair counts as height, then Marge is technically taller than the tall girl, but she, she overcomes that with confidence and really it doesn't come up at all. That's right. And Marge had to really dig deep for that hidden talent. Tall girl's like professionally trained in every single way, but she just has issues. <laughs> Should we all try our Marge impression? Oh, um, homie! Oh, homie! Oh, oh, homie! Tell my least it's time for dinner! That's I my mean, Marge say, Simpson. You can say that Marge's current voice sounds like a poor <laughs> uh, impression of what she used to be. I mean, that's my impression of, like, season 32 Marge. <laughs> It's, it, it sounds like the the voice for Marge's mother is now just Marge's real voice. <laughs> like Jesus, somebody who sounds like they've been smoking for fifty years. Because I guess I hope she doesn't smoke in real life. But doing the smoker's voice for four different characters has fucking destroyed her. What do you think we're gonna do when her voice completely gives out? AI. Oh God. Every it's Simpsons dystopian. character will be AI in ten years. Oh boy. I mean, uh, Homer's voice actor is like 60. He has a few good years in him. He's gonna come back as uh, the genie for the straight to DVD Aladdin sequel yet again. Uh, and the robot no, devil in Futurama. Better show. What else has Dan Castellaneta been in, Aggie? Uh, he was in that one sitcom, right? Or was that a movie? S stuck on you? I heard he also plays Poochie from Itchy and Scratchy. <laughs> uh, they're saying fight, 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 bite, bite, bite. Like I don't think that they bite each other that often. Oh, it should I've be never fight, 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 that. die, die, die. The Itchy and Scratchy show, because they, they, I don't see them bite each other. It's more like dynamite and shit. Uh, maybe they should do that in an upcoming episode. Uh, the episode where they finally bite each other and just call it that. It's what uh, is 40 years of cartoons were leading up to this episode to explain the theme song. <laughs> well, yeah. You guys want to plug anything so we can get the hell out of here and, and prepare for Tall Girl 3? Oh boy, I'm on x.com at heartsypridesy. Well, I'm getting back on my live stream game, rumble.com slash C slash Eggy White, all one word. We're keeping it regular. Hell yeah. And from the Tall Girl Fan Club, I've been a Simeon Jimmy. I have oh, been Eggy Side. A piece. Just say bye, Heartsy. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs>